Hi there, and welcome to this edition of our SciFest video blog. In this episode, we are going to examine the element hydrogen. Hydrogen is the lightest of all of the elements and is probably the most abundant element in the universe. Along with carbon and oxygen, it is one of the essential building blocks of life, with all organic matter on our planet containing hydrogen in some form. Naturally occurring elemental hydrogen is very hard to come by. Any that may end up in our atmosphere quickly escapes into space, given the lightweight nature of the element enables it to escape Earth's gravitational pull. Therefore, the significant majority of hydrogen found in our planet is as compounds with other elements in all living things and, of course, very much abundantly in the water we drink and find in the vast oceans of Earth. Hydrogen is an essential element, without which, in its various forms, no life on this planet could exist. In terms of its chemistry, hydrogen is denoted by the letter H on the periodic table and has an atomic number of 1. Hydrogen is classified as being non-metallic. It is classified as belonging to group 1, period 1 and the S block of the periodic table. It has a rounded relative atomic mass of 1.008. Hydrogen is a colourless and odourless gas at room temperature and exists in this phase as a compound consisting of two atoms of hydrogen co-joined together. Hydrogen has three naturally occurring isotopes, these being protium, deuterium and tritium. Protium is the most abundant isotope making up over 99.9% of all the available hydrogen on Earth. For this reason, the name protium is rarely used, with the name hydrogen being interchangeably used for this isotope and the collective isotopes of which hydrogen is composed. Protium consists of one proton in its nucleus, but, uniquely for any of the elements, no neutrons. The nucleus is surrounded by one electron. Deuterium consists of one proton and one neutron in its nucleus, again surrounded by one electron. Tritium consists of one proton and two neutrons in its nucleus, again surrounded by one electron. Both protium and deuterium are non-radioactive, however tritium is. Uniquely for an element, the different isotopes of hydrogen can be known by different letters, such that deuterium can be denoted by the letter D, and tritium can be denoted by the letter T. However, these symbols are rarely used, although they are still accepted, with the following symbols being preferred for each of the three isotopes. Although present in almost all organic molecules making up the variety of life on our planet, hydrogen itself is not very reactive from a biological perspective. However, its chemistry is quite the opposite, with elemental hydrogen being extremely reactive with other elements under the right conditions, and is itself extremely and often dangerously combustible, especially in the presence of oxygen or chlorine. Its lightweight and extremely combustible nature has seen many uses over the years. Hydrogen has been used as a lifting gas inside airships, sometimes known as zeppelins or blimps, which were quite popular from around the mid-1800s. During World War I, airships were often used as observation platforms and bombers. Passenger flights were also being undertaken with growing success, however, Following a number of tragic disasters involving hydrogen-filled airships, the most infamously known being the disaster of the 6th of May 1937, when an airship called Hindenburg suddenly burst into flames. 
It didn't take long for the use of hydrogen as a lifting gas in airships to cease thereafter. However, hydrogen's legacy as a lifting gas still continues today, as it is still used as a lifting gas in some weather balloons. Hydrogen is also used during the processing of fossil fuels and in the production of ammonia. It is also used as a hydrogenating agent to increase the level of unsaturated fats and oils in some foods, such as margarines. Hydrogen has also been influential in the world of space travel, having been used in combination with oxygen as rocket fuel and nickel hydrogen batteries having seen some successful use in a number of satellites and space missions. In space, hydrogen plays a part in the formation of stars and provides their energy source, producing the light that we see from our sun and other stars. Hydrogen was initially described in a reaction undertaken by Robert Boyle in 1671, where the reaction between iron filings and dilute acids resulted in the production of a gas. However, it wouldn't be until 1766 when Henry Cavendish replicated Robert Boyle's experiments for the gas to be produced to be classified as a discrete substance and therefore as an element. For this reason, Henry Cavendish is often quoted as being the discoverer of hydrogen. The element discovered by Henry Cavendish was then given its name hydrogen as we know it today, by Antoine Lavoisier in 1783 from the Greek words hydro meaning water and genes meaning creator. Hydrogen can be produced in a variety of different ways, often as the byproduct of other reactions. For use in the laboratory, the simplest method is still the same experiment conducted by Boyle, Cavendish and Lavoisier all those many years ago. That is, the reaction of a relatively reactive metal when placed into solutions of dilute acids, such as zinc and dilute hydrochloric acid, forming zinc chloride and hydrogen. For more large-scale commercial uses, hydrogen can be produced by the electrolysis of water, such that the hydrogen and oxygen atoms making up the water itself can be separated by the application of a low voltage current. Other ways of producing hydrogen involve the application of high temperatures to hydrocarbons in order to cleave the hydrogen bonds that exist within these molecules and thus release hydrogen that can be collected and used in other applications. Hydrogen has many other uses, history and chemistry much more than we could fit into this one episode. Please feel free to browse our other videos on our website and our YouTube channel for more science and science related topics. So, this is the end of our episode shining a spotlight on the element hydrogen uh, and we hope that you enjoyed it. Um, please feel free to um, leave a like on our page and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like what we're all about. Thank you for watching.